We've waited two years for this, but Eurovision is back tonight, and we can't wait. So let's start the show. Fancy a quick snack? Well, on Eurovision night, you're probably going to get pretty peckish. So, if you want to sort of nip for a few seconds while um, one of these, quite frankly, one of the performers that you're not that interested in is on, it only takes a few minutes to make Ventil Tashies. Ventil Tashies. Ventil Tashies. I think I said that right. Basically, it's bread with cinnamon and it's a Dutch snack, a lovely little treat that you can make in a few minutes while one of your least favourite performers is on and I'm sure there might be just one or two, not while the UK performer James Newman is on, of course. So what do you need? Well, basically, it's um, we're following American rules for our US fans this week, one and a half cups of milk, semi-skimmed, skimmed, full fat, whatever you like. One egg, um, one tablespoon of white sugar, a quarter of a tablespoon of a ground cinnamon, and two tablespoons of brown sugar, and that will be for sprinkling later on. And don't forget, four slices of white bread. Now, it can be a day old, that's fine, because it's all going to be fried up and it's going to taste absolutely fabulous. So we're going to combine the milk and the egg, hopefully no eggshell, the sugar, the white sugar that is, and a quarter of a teaspoon of the ground cinnamon, all into this large bowl. Get our whisk and uh, mix it all up together so it's all totally combined. So keep going with the whisk. Um, you could use an electric whisk maybe <laughs> if you've got a weak arm like I seem to have. Um, but basically whisk it until it's all sort of nice and smooth like that. So next stage is to oil your pan and it's at a medium to high heat. I'm using a, uh, a squirty oil and just leave that to heat up for about a minute or so. So while the oil is heating up, just give your mixture another little whisk stir around uh, to make sure it is nice and smooth. Now, now, here's the fun bit, and this is where you get your hands dirty. Uh, you take a bit of bread and basically just dip it around, uh, get it nice and soaked. And then we're going to pop it into the pan. Ooh, you hear that lovely sizzle there. Flip it over. Whoa, look at that. It's almost, um, it's a bit like eggy bread, I suppose. Maybe turn the heat down a notch at this stage. It's getting a little bit smoky, but it smells absolutely delicious. I think that's just about done on the bottom side as well. If it does have a soggy bottom, it's actually okay this time. So, there we are. Just take it off the pan and put it onto your plate. Uh, turn the, the pan off perhaps for now and uh, we'll get working on the others. And the last one is ready. Get that onto your plate. Turn off your pan and then very carefully so you don't burn yourself. I think it's almost ready to tuck in. Well, so here we have our beautiful Ventil Tashies. Ventil Tashies. Ventil Tashies. Ventil Tashies. Ventil Tashies. 
I've got two plates, so I need some help with eating them. I'm not that greedy, so Paul, why don't you come in and help me? So you can serve them um, either on their oh. own with the brown sugar, with the brown sugar, or with some fruit and um, and cream or ice cream, absolutely anything on it. So I'll put Paul, some. Uh, yes, please sprinkle the sugar on. I'm ready with the strawberries. Strawberries on each one. There we go. Wow. Strawberries, do you want cream on yours? Maybe just a little bit. Just a little bit of cream. Well, pour your own cream on there. Um, you can lather mine. I love my do Okay, on. save a little for tomorrow's coffee, for goodness sake. And then tuck in. Mm. Let's see how this tastes. Oh boy. All nicely done there. And a strawberry as well. Pick this up. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. There's only one word to say. Mmm. And what's that? Delicious. Yeah, that's it. Delicious! <laughs>
I'm not usually a fan of Blackbird beers, but this this is quite good. It's subtle. It's not too overpowering. It's pretty mellow. Yeah, this would go down really well tonight, I think. As it would every night, I think. I think so. Okay, so the, the next one, which I can't pronounce, but... So next is a Hefeweizen. This is a... This looks like a cloudy German beer. Mm. So let's just have a cheers. Cheers. Mmm. There is like a weediness to it. There's like a... There's yeah. Like a cloudy flavor to it. Um, I smell it as well. I'm not, not overly fussed on these ones, I have to say. I've had this before in the States. But still, I wouldn't say no. And the thing is, um, because it's it's not overly fizzy, um, you're not going to get as gassy, I guess. Yeah. Which is always a good thing. I think that is a good thing. Shall we move on to number three? Um, this is uh, one which we, we quaff quite often um, because we do like Spain quite a lot. So we're on to the San Miguel. Viva España. Viva España. A real taste of spin. Again, this is very mellow. This isn't too overpowering. The alcohol by volume isn't too much. Mmm. Very enjoyable. And it's great with a tapas. Cheers so to that. And the last one, well, you can't forget the UK. And let's th hope that it's the last time you hear the words last and UK in the same sentence last tonight. Last but not least. And this is from um, a beer club called Flavourly. And the brewery is By the Horns, based in Wandsworth in London. And the actual beer, it's a British pale ale called Heatwave. And I think we could all be doing with one of those right now. So um, cheers to a heat cheers, wave. cheers to a heat wave and a British Eurovision win for James Newman tonight. Come on, James. Ooh, that's a real fruity little number. Lovely. I think I taste a little bit of citrus. Something, yeah, there's something citrusy there. Well, it's called Heat Wave, and let's hope that the UK strikes where the iron is hot tonight. So, cheers to that, and cheers to Eurovision. Cheers. Enjoy your evening. Mmm. That's not bad, actually. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. San Marino is competing in Eurovision for the 11th time. Back in 2018, Paul and I visited the fifth smallest country in the world. The hilly territory is completely surrounded by Italy, measures just 24 square miles and has a population of 33,500. San Marino cemented its place as an independent republic in a series of treaties after Italy became a national state in the second half of the 19th century. If you want something a little bit more substantial on Eurovision night and you want to honour the Netherlands, well, how about a Dutch apple tart? Sounds absolutely delicious. Um, what you need is two cups of all-purpose plain flour, and it's already been sifted. Um, three quarters of a cup of uh, softened butter. Uh, two eggs, which have been beaten. A half cup of white sugar and some ground cinnamon. That's for the dough. Uh, for the filling you will need two pounds of cooking apples or Bramley apples in the UK, uh, peeled, cored and sliced, already done by the lovely Paul, thank you very much. Uh, a half a cup of a sultanas, a quarter of a cup of white sugar and some more cinnamon. 
So let's get started. So the first stage is that we want to be combining the flour, the butter and the sugar and the cinnamon all together. So I'm just going to add the softened butter into where the flour is. We'll put our sugar in. We'll add our our egg and a half a teaspoon if I can get it in there. Or is it a full teaspoon of cinnamon? You never have too much cinnamon anyway. And we're going to mix all this together um, to combine it. So, oh yeah, this is good therapy here. And it really is. Um, a good idea to have the butter completely softened, not melting, but uh, if, if it's if it's hard, um, you're just going to have more lumps to work through. So the dough uh, has now come uh, been completely shaped into a nice sort of ball here, and on a lightly, uh, well, <laughs> say lightly, <laughs> I like my flour. Uh, board. I'm going to roll it out. So here we are, and I want to roll it into um, a circle, uh, quite a large circle here um, for the for the tin. Now at this stage, what I need to do is work out um, three quarters of it because I need to keep some for the top. So I'm going to cut that bit off and leave it to the side. Let's turn it over and roll it out a little bit more till we get a nice circle formed for the cake tin, which I have sitting there right next to me. That looks about right. Uh, so let's see, let's lift it, uh, see if it all falls apart. Whoa! That'll do the job. You can just work it into into shape there uh, around the the edges if you can what I might do is just steal a little bit for patching around the corner uh, in that part and just work it in until it's the whole way whole way round just like that right so we've got our cake tin with the pastry in the base now we want to fill it up with the apples and the sultana mix. So basically, you just throw these in and mix it up with a little bit of sugar along the way. Some sultanas. Mix it all in. More apples. And then we get a little bit of cinnamon. We'll put about half a, a teaspoon of cinnamon in at this stage. More apples. Some more sugar, just mix it all up like this. More sultanas, and a little bit more sugar, like that. We, the apples will be a little bit sort of on the on the sour side um, without the sugar, so it's a good idea to make sure that you do have that much sugar um, from the recipe going into it. So now we have our lovely cake tin filled with the lovely goodies there. And um, meantime, I've used the rest of the dough, rolled it out and cut it into strips, which I'm now going to form as a little sort of a lattice, uh, if possible. I've probably uh, done a short change myself slightly with the, with the, uh, the dough on this occasion. But hey, it's the first time I've done this, so kudos for me actually doing it right uh, so there we go it's actually going to cover it pretty well not too bad not too bad and then with the remaining egg just get a brush is that a paint brush oh well <laughs> it's the only brush i could find uh, I, don't, I don't have a hairbrush in the, in the house not for me anyway brush it uh the egg the remaining egg that uh, was left over from earlier over the pie and that will give it a nice glaze. In the meantime, preheat the oven and uh, then it'll be nice and toasty warm, ready to, uh, to pop in. So you need to have preheated the oven, uh, or at least it's a good idea to do that. And we're gonna pop it in there uh, 
for 60 minutes, so one hour at 175 to 180 degrees Celsius. So popping into the oven, there we go, and it's already been set, all I need to do is press start, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes, an hour's uh, time for me, and we'll see what it's turned out like. Wow, that turned out absolutely fabulous. And you know what? I think we're just going to have to wait a little bit, and we'll tuck into it at the end of the show. As one of the big five countries, Germany, along with the UK, France, Spain and Italy, is guaranteed entry to the final. Paul and I last visited the country in May 2017, when we took a day trip to Trier during a holiday in nearby Luxembourg. Germany was one of the seven countries to take part in the first Eurovision in 1954. It has won twice. Eurovision super fan. <laughs> no half measures here. Oh my. Oh my god. Rise like oh, a that's... phoenix. Oh, is oh, uh... oh uh, Conchita. I'm now Conchita first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like my flags? Do you like my is... flags? Oh my Paul? god. This one will be on Paul. Wow. You have a lot. You have. I think one of them is Cyprus, right? Well, they're all Eurovision. Yeah. So you are known for singing in the care homes before the pandemic. Have you ever I sung am. any Eurovision songs? Have I sung Are You Are You Mad? I do a Eurovision themed an hour, if I can do an hour. How do you have enough material for an hour? I do. Um, I do a lot from the 60s. A lot from the 70s, uh, a few from the 80s, and I even do some obscure songs that nobody remembers except me. Can you give us an example of the ones you would be singing? Yes, like, yes, I do. The names of the songs, I mean. Um, in 1985, uh, Austria sent Gary Lux oh, along right. to the Eurovision. Yeah, lovely, handsome man he was. <laughs> and uh, I manage, and I've always loved the song, and I managed to uh, find a, because uh, he sang the song obviously in, in German, and uh, and I was able to get the um, the English version and the right. English backing track, and away I went. It, it came sixth, was it sixth, I think, or eighth? Oh. It came eighth in the show, I think, with 60 points, oh, wow. but nobody remembers that song, unless you're Austrian, of course. Uh -huh. And I, I fit that one in. I do Bobby Socks. Do you, uh, are you old enough to remember Bobby Socks, the the, uh, the group that won for Norway in the 1980s? I do uh, Let It Swing, right. Let It Rock and Roll, as well as some uh, songs which actually won the competition. Oh, I do cool. um, I Boom, Bang, A Bang. Oh, yeah. Do, yeah, 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 yeah. I do Puppet on a String. Mm hmm I do all kinds of everything from Dana. Marcus will know that one. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, and yes. Uh, and I can do an hour, or probably over an hour, really, oh, of oh. that Eurovision song. So around about this time, the care homes, they know that I like the Eurovision, so they ring me up and they ask me for a Eurovision theme. I'm probably one of a few people that are actually doing that at the moment. When did you start tuning into Eurovision? Uh, it's got to be in the early nineteen early, early mid nineteen seventies. Obviously, oh, when I was a small child, my mum used to watch it, but um, uh -huh. I didn't get into it really until until the seventies when uh -huh. I, you know, they some of the songs used to get into the charts, like yeah. um, the New Seekers, Beg, uh -huh. Steal or Borrow, which is another song I do. Uh -huh. 
and uh, and every year I used to tape it in one form or another. I think in the mid seventies I had a an old tape recorder, <laughs> and I put the tape recorder near the telly, uh -huh. and I press. And as soon as the music started, mm -hmm. I press play and record, and I'd have to tell the the whole family to shh, because otherwise every noise could be heard in the right, background. Yeah. Of course. And I've still got the 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 video, the, no, the uh, cassette tapes upstairs in the loft somewhere, but the quality obviously isn't very good. And okay. uh, and sometimes, obviously, the the tape machine used to chew the chew the tape, and uh, and I used to get really upset when that happened because I uh -huh. thought I'd lost. Yeah. I thought I'd lost. Yeah. Lost the, 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 the tapes forever but now you no. can uh, you can you can hear every song from any competition oh, okay. on the internet now so i've got the whole i've got i've got about 20 or 30 dvds upstairs that wow. my husband bought me for christmas <laughs> okay so out of eurovision history what is your favorite act of all time uh, this is a hard question, Paul. There's not really one act, not not one is act. There? But there... No, no. There's there's a few. Okay, I can so pick them out. maybe five then, or yeah, like that, your, yeah. your top five then. Okay. Well, um, I'm not sure of the year. It's got to be something like 1972, something uh -huh. like that, 74. Um, Anne Marie David, Wonderful Life. Uh -huh. That's one of them. And then we move on to 1982, Nicole and a Little Piece, uh -huh. which I've just heard on uh, Pig of the Pops today. That was the second. <laughs> okay. And then uh, nine, uh, 2017, uh, the Portuguese entry. All right. That oh, was that one. I yes. forgot the name of it. It, it, it. it was that really slow song, wasn't it? Yes, it was very, very 19, 1910s, 1925. Mm. Mm. um yeah i absolutely loved that one and i did like uh, the in the year 2000 i did like fly on the wings of love That's and, and familiar. It, watch it, it it won for the olsen brothers yeah okay so those are varied acts ranging from many different years um so uh -huh. historically which acts normally perform well at eurovision uh, well, it, it, all manner of like, different. Places. Sweden, Sweden always do pretty well. Sweden. Do you have like, so is so is there some sort of formula for winning the Eurovision? I think that that's I, kind of where I'm going towards. Yeah, I don't think so. Right. Um, it changes every so often. It changes. Yeah. I mean, at one time Ireland were the big winners, weren't they, Marcus? If you can yes. hear me. Uh, three, yeah. three or four. Seven. Times. Yeah, they've they won about three or four on the trot. Of course, yeah. Johnny Logan. Johnny Logan is the most prolific um, winner. He's won at singing it to himself, and he's also penned a Eurovision winner. So he's kind of won it three times. And nobody else has nobody else has done that. Yeah. So, um, but they've sort of gone off the radar a bit just lately. Ireland. So, yeah. which acts do you like this year? Which if acts? Any. If any. well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, funnily enough, right, my my son is a big Eurovision fan. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, I've passed passed the genes down to one of my sons. And we're both in agreement. <laughs> we're both in agreement. We both like Malta this year. And I had a little look at the odds yesterday, and it is the, the favourite to win. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, Malta. So it's not very often that my son and I like the same song. So I will I think write my... Malta down as possible yeah. one to look out for. Um, yeah, Malta. Um, they've got another couple that are um, that they think will do very well, and I can't see the appeal. I mean, they but like as... the Italian. They like the Italian what the, yeah. the Italian song, and that's um, that's, that's a, another rock, another rock, uh, heavy rock uh, song. Yeah. And um, I put on my on my first hearing. What did I put about the um, the Italian entry? Uh, it says it's it's a rock song, so it stands out, yeah. but it's not for me. It wasn't for me. And then yeah. uh, last week I had another little little listen, and I put definitely not a winner, bottom of the pile. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's a favourite. 
it's a favorite with a lot of bookies so somebody's seen something in it i'm not well, sure what well i know that they kind of there's like many different genres to Eurovision. But my very favourites at the moment, uh, which aren't supposed to be, aren't supposed to do well, are Germany. Uh huh. Germany. Write it down, Paul. Germany. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I do like, um, I do like Denmark. Oh, okay. I, I do like that. But um, my tastes aren't for everybody. I'm getting on a bit now, Paul. You know, so um, so I my taste would be what people of the 60s and the 70s, you know, who grew up in that era, they would probably agree with me on some of the songs that I like. But no, don't ask I, me who's going to win because I'm always wrong. <laughs> I was going, okay, so leading up to that point, which acts do you think will make it to the 2021 Eurovision final? So well, which uh, ones okay. do you think could make it from the semifinals into the finals? Well, how long is a piece of string, Paul? <laughs> it, will depend, it will depend on the, the age of the people that are voting, I would think. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the voters don't think like me. So I, I'll probably say, oh, th uh, this one definitely. And it probably won't qualify. So um, I have mm -hmm. no idea. No so, idea at all. What do you think of Australia's 2021 Eurovision contestant, Montaigne, is it? Is that well, I don't know what it? her name is, but um, I don't like the song at all. I mean, last year was, not last year, because that was cancelled, yeah. but the year before, yeah. um, visually, yeah. was it last year or the year before? The um, year before. Visually, when she was on a, they were on a, like, great big, oh, massive yeah. pole swaying around, oh, yeah. weren't they? And that was brilliant. And she had <laughs> a fantastic operatic voice, and that was mesmerising. And I quite like that, but this year, I, can't, I don't see the appeal. I mean, I like Australia, yeah, uh, but uh -huh. I'm always... I'm always a little bit upset because they, they never give us any points. Why? None at Why? all. What? No. Why? Oh, my God. Yeah, they're supposed to be our friends, you know? But mm. maybe they see us as, as a threat, but, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they haven't given us any points or, or hardly any if they have given us anything. So. Shame on Australia. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, 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 yes. Okay. Ban them, well, ban them. <laughs> who do you want to win and why who do i want well i've got a few i've got a few I, the, the song that's growing on me more than any of the others uh -huh. um is um it's called tiktok by croatia tiktok tiktok croatia oh. i wouldn't mind if that one um, i wouldn't I mind that if one the, down. yeah i wouldn't mind if the maltese maltese song wins uh-huh or um, I don't mind if, um, obviously, my favourite's Germany. I like the German entry and the Denmark entry. I really okay. like them. I'll, I'll nip in with a question. Um, yeah? What do you think is the enduring appeal of Eurovision? I mean, just not just this year, but every year. Um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, it is, it's, yeah. it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Well, it's got bigger and bigger and bigger, hasn't it? It's, it? it's sort of evolved. It was it was quite the same for years and years from the 19, I think 1956 was the first one up until the year 2000. It was quite, you know, quite uh, the same. There was a lot of, yeah. Um, it, I mean, at one point, the audience were, were made up of, you know, the elite really with their pearls and their diamonds. And now when you see them, you know, they're, the mad crowd that, that's in it. <laughs> it's kind of evolved and evolved and yeah. evolved. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, and it's it's just such a fun show to watch. You know, you never know what's, you, what you're going to see, what you're going to hear. And, um, and, of course, more and more countries are getting involved. Mm. More and more countries are having wars and becoming independent and sort of, you know, there's like five, five countries out of the one. And they all want a shot at, um, you know, at winning. And music is supposed to bring everybody together, doesn't it? Have you got any any special snacks or anything lined up? Uh, well, you know, glass of wine, scorecard. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
I always give my husband a scorecard and uh, inevitably he always uh, falls asleep halfway through. What's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donna, well, thank you very much for well, joining us on this um, call. Um, well, this is Graham Norton. It's a, it's a pleasure seeing Graham Norton. Oh my God, you haven't seen him for ages. I've got my, yeah, I've got my, got all, everything I need for my uh, Eurovision night. I just can't wait now. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Donna, thank you very much for speaking with us today. And yeah, I'm sure we will catch up with you. Um, I'll, I'll be texting you on the night. Will do. Thank you very much for your time, Donna. Okay. Was I knowledgeable enough? Oh, fantastic. And basically, <laughs> the time with the flags. I love it. <laughs> basically, we... Nice to see Ireland there, too, behind. Yeah. 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 No, but... Pride, pride of place there. <laughs> well, I, for one, can't wait to tuck into that apple tart. So... Let's dig in and see how it turned out. This looks yummy, 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 yummy. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, you taste the cinnamon. You um, taste mm. the tartness from the apples. You know something? What's that? It's absolutely... yummy delicious. Good. Mm. Delicious. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Happy Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs>